Minecraft, with so many game modes to offer like survival, creative, and hardcore, you'll never not have fun. No, 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 no. <sighs> so this is what it's like to be in the flat earth community. Well, for the next 100 days, I'm going to be surviving on three layers of dirt and eat only the finest of green blobs. I do end up creating one of my favorite and best builds to date, so stick around to see that, but let's get right into day one. Spawning on the world, it was nothing. Only slimes for miles than just us sitting here in the cold void of green and blue. Yes, I brought Chloe on this adventure with me, so at least I won't have to be alone on this vast plain of Null. The only relief we have on this world are villages, so finding one of those is crucial. But before that, we stabbed a few cows with my bare hands. What did you expect? We don't have anything. And with half the sun depleted, we made it to our first village. What we can collect from these things is minimal. What is a big one allowing us to craft tools, take down homes for stone, and get the bare minimum of caveman utensils? The villages provide a few more crucial things, like iron. Killing the golem got me five, so we're off to a good start. Question number one, what is easier to get in this world, diorite or diamonds? If you pick diamonds, you're correct, and hopefully crying with me. With that lovely information, before leaving this particular village, we stole more resources like animals and crops. Then I made us protective shields to survive the nightly jog we partook on to the next village. When finding it, we managed to get books, which are impossible except for one particular building. Being one of the rarest, but not as rare as a blacksmith, which we still have yet to find. I took the Iron Golem's life, murdered some kin, and left the place so much worse than when it was found. Back on the hunt, all we get to see are giant green boogers bouncing around, threatening the very thing we call life. We got to a blacksmith village, and you will not believe this chest. Two diamonds, and iron totaling us to 20, which is a huge push in the right direction, allowing us the hardest part of making an enchant table crossed off on day two. And back to ransacking the village as if it were purge night. May as well have been with all the mobs hunting us onto our next village, with nothing happening in that one. Then on day three, we found another bookshelf house, which is still almost as hard to get as diamonds. But with enough of these, we'll have a level 30 enchant table instead of just a level one. While here, we also got our first wandering trader, which was cool, but not only was it useless, it just randomly disappeared. I don't know whatever happens to these things. From there, we got another iron golem kill and a blacksmith you'll think I probably faked, as it had 12 obsidian in it, enough for a nether portal or an enchant table. But that won't matter since I grabbed the other lava, making it known that we have 14 obsidian and can do whatever we want right now. Could you imagine being on a super flat world and going into the nether on day three? In my original super flat video, I wasn't able to do any of this this fast, so I'm excited to see what we can build base wise. Then I finished off today by killing another iron golem, and then another iron golem, and then finding a double bookshelf house. Day four was iron golem, iron golem, iron golem, blacksmith with obsidian for days, and that was it. Then on day five, we found what we were looking for in a village, a stable form of food cows and sheep that can be bred, as for some reason while running around the world, no animals were spawning. I'm really not sure why, but I guess the server just hates animals, or us, one of the two. We headed outside of the village to set up our base, as we don't want anything near the village like zombie spawns and then killing all of our villagers. I started by putting down all of my forms of furnaces, crafting tables, lecterns, whatever, just to show off what I had gotten, and Chloe did the same thing with like three items. I guess I was gathering a little bit more than her through all these villages. Oh, I'm a terrible person. Also, I wanted to say when we dropped off our items, I actually organized my stuff this time. Just for you and Chloe, I organized the first chest. But to be fair, this is the only time I do this, but I, I thought I'd mention it, getting like a good credit points with you guys or something. I don't know. With a semi base in order, I wanted to check out the nether. We didn't want it near the building area because we just cannot move this thing ever. So the village it was. However, when building the portal, we realized we cannot light this thing at all, so I grabbed one of the lava buckets from earlier and let it decide whether to light the portal or the village on fire. Thankfully, the dimension opened up and we were able to go through. Even if we ended up losing a villager in the process, I don't think I'd mind too much. Upon entering, we discovered the luck to continue, a lovely fortress that we don't need at all, seeing as a regular Minecraft world would have a stronghold, but here, no, we don't have one of those. So this thing isn't even good for us. The only things in the nether that can benefit us are wither skeleton skulls, bastions, and netherite. But it was still good to come in here as we found one of the only other wood types that we can build out of, crimson logs. At that moment, I found the substance for all future projects. I gathered as much as two axes would let me and left with almost nine stacks of the log. Plus, I did find saddles, so I might try and find a horse later. Day eight, I started work on a giant circle for the base. I wanna have a wall that will separate us from the slimes. Then on the inside, we can have a tower that we might live in. I say might because, well, you'll see. 
However, I did make sure that this circle was perfect thanks to a generator. Don't judge me, you guys know I can't do math. Once that was done, I started laying out the scattered design of wood, ranging from one to three pieces per log of oak or crimson. Then it rained, which sucked because, well, I hate it, but anyway, with that idea laid out, I began stacking up the wood into a wall. And after finishing a bit of it, I could not tell if I wanted the crimson stripped or not. Both ideas actually look really good with not a clear difference winning for me. It's either we have a pink wall or a red wall, and I, I just couldn't tell. Eventually, I just started placing all the wood down and Chloe followed me stripping all of it, meaning pink it was. We got about halfway with the oak before running out, but continued with the crimson until running out of that in quadrant 4. So we spent the night making a large tree farm that Chloe claims for the rest of the 100 days. Day 11, I woke up in an apocalypse and just punched zombies, cause baller, I, I don't know why I wrote that in the script. Then I got back to work, placing down more oak until I was out again, but while Chloe gathered more of that, I headed back into the nether for more crimson. This wood is thankfully an infinite source, just like oak, even if oak is a little bit harder to obtain at the start. Once home, I finished the wall and started to map out an entrance. It took me all night just to get one version that I like, but I took much inspiration from the Toro that was made in my 100 days duo one block, and by morning, I had it looking perfect. Then I chopped more trees, cause that will never ever end for me. I finished up all the entrances and worked on the spikes of the wall. The tops should not be plain, so I grabbed fences and slabs and ran around placing them for a bit until a wandering trader invis guy arrived. This time he had pumpkins and melons and of course I bought those from him ASAP cause we can scale up that operation for villager trays in the later days. Furthering the chance of us getting real armor in these 100 days. Then on day 15 we did cool stuff like sitting here and getting gravel. This was mainly for flint, but I wanted to show how we could spend our day when our brain stops working at 5am. Yes, I record some of these at 5am. These videos take forever, please subscribe. Day 16, I took away all of the villagers purposes. To get better tools in this world, I need to get emeralds from Fletcher's, which I made, and maybe in prison some nitwits. What are they used for anyway? They're fine underground. I made the Fletcher's and started my capitalism journey. I walked away with 38 emeralds, probably one one hundredth of what I actually need to start off with. I then grabbed what I had to make a toolsmith and start my work with him. Then my only trade after getting screwed was iron for emeralds, which I used all of ours on him and got why? Why do you have to be, why, oh, the worst tools possible. But with those 38 emeralds, guess where we made it? A diamond shovel. <laughs> uh, scam artists. So with that unfortunate trade, I still have one more level on the guy, so I went back to collect my dues. And by that, use all the wood for emeralds just to get two diamond shovels that Chloe is just going to throw back in my face. You want to go bashing hunting? Yes, after that, we went on the hunt for a bastion, as one of the ways of upgrading our villagers were iron. And if you don't know already, blocks of it can be found in some of the bastions. So we picked a direction and just went for it, until under the lava, we finally saw one. Making it there, we realized it's the trash one, but if we can fight off a bastion with no armor, then I think we can handle the rest of 100 days. Entering the sneaky thing, we had to be careful. Our first foe was just a normal piggy, or like four, but we don't talk about that. One of the chests I found amazing gold axes with the best enchants almost possible, but of course they're gold. Then we fought off a hoglin together, somehow, and I really question what we are doing here. After that, I found some golden carrots and meat, finally grabbing the bottom chest with just more food. And I may have made a slight mistake with this brute kill, but we're fine now. Onto the top layer, which had a lot more piggies, and while having a grand old time, I was shot down to half health. But I got a chest with arrows, so it makes up for it. However, we found zero other chests, so that was kind of useless. But we were determined to get something out of this trip, so we looked for another one, stumbling across a treasure bastion in the middle of a lava lake. Bridging over here was scary, but at the same time, I feel like it was a little bit cinematic. We looted the top boring part first, because we're going to save the best for last. First chest was a crossbow and gold, and a heart attack. Brutes are just scary in general, okay? Then in the large chest, we got a fortune 2 diamond pickaxe, a regular diamond shovel, tons of iron, and a lot more. Definitely the best chest we found in the nether thus far. But the middle chest was even better. After dealing with a few brutes and the magma spawner, I opened it to find two diamond boots, a sword, and a ton of gold. Especially after mining all of it at the bottom, we have a lot to trade with piggies. And if you're wondering, I tried to organize when I got home, okay? Just for you guys, I really tried. But I'm just not the best at it, okay? We can all admit to our flaws. Day 20, I forgot to record, so um, we made a farm, we got a few chickens, which is good, and I also got a pickaxe from the toolsmith, still want an axe, cause trees, but hey, that's cool. Then on day 21, I gave men wood for green gems, and then tried to get green men to make children with other green men, and I used an orange vegetable to do it. This is Minecraft, people, just oversimplified. 
I also started working on another toolsmith so I can get an axe for Chloe. As she has been at the tree farm for like 15 days now and has supplied us with all of the wood we need for the base as well as all of the wood for the green gems I keep talking about. So she deserves it. And once I got through all of the iron crap, I was finally able to gift her a diamond tool so that the trees can be cut down even faster. Do not look at this chest, it's a very organized tool system. Shush. Day 22, I woke up with the villagers, which is odd. I don't know how I got here or what I drank, but anyway, I worked on the trees with Chloe and sold more wood for gems. I still don't know how they keep falling for this scam. Then I spent the rest of the day in the nether. To make the build I want, I'll be requiring like 30 stacks of crimson log, so I'll be in here a while. Although I wasn't able to gather as much as I wanted for a day and a half, but I did sit in here long enough to want to leave. For the rest of day 24, I put away the nine stacks of wood, bred the animals because we forgot that they were hungry, and built an enchant table without lapis. Then I made a man take a job he didn't want for the rest of his life. Enjoy the nine to five, Frank. And then use the lapis to make Chloe a god axe. Again, I don't think you understand how many hours she spent at this farm, so it's well deserved. Now for the days that never ended. I began work on the tower at the center of the base. If you're familiar with me and my duo video, you know I know how to make a tower. But what you don't know is I only know how to make one type of tower. So we're basically making the Walmart version of the base from that video. Hopefully when I move onto the outside and decorate the build, it will look good. But we are seriously buying this off of Wish right now. Then the next few days, I needed a break, so I began to trade with the armor villager. Of course, I can get myself some iron armor from it, but that's not really worth it, since eventually we can get diamond stuff. However, I ran into the same issue. I can only progress his tiers with iron, and surprise, surprise, I'm out. So I took the gold we had from the Bastion hunts previously and went to trade it with the piglins. Once I had some working for me, I picked up what I wanted. Obsidian, pearls, leather, books, pots, etc. And then of course, the only reason I'm here, iron nuggets. See, a rare trade these men have is a large sum of nuggies in exchange for my life savings. So with that, I was able to get 25 ingots of iron and trade it all the way to just get a glance at the diamond armor he has to offer. I did buy some, however, as we do need two sets and half of it is the same as some for me. And when I went to go check back in with Chloe, I had full diamond armor, but surprise, surprise, she didn't even notice. I actually sat here for a very long time waiting for her to realize, but she kind of never did until I pointed it out. But now I have to get her full diamond. I traded the rest of my life savings away to get Chloe some of the same gear I had, and she enjoyed the pants at least. After that, I made a realization. She has organized all of our stuff again, and I have another mailbox which is something I forgot to mention. If you saw the Island 100 days, you know what I mean by mailbox, but here's a brief explanation. The deal with this thing is, I have to put all of the items that I would normally put in a chest into here. Reason being is because apparently I'm just wrong and don't do sorting like Chloe wants me to, so I'm reduced to using a mailbox for my items. However, this time, it's a chest boat instead, so if you ever see me sitting in a boat, I'm just dropping off things for her to organize. Cool, with that explained, let's move on to the dumbest thing I've done yet. I wanted to replace all of the walls around our base with red wood instead of pink. Trust me, there's a reason. The tower I made is way too pink, so to fix that, I made the walls red. Look, it just bothered me, okay? I can't really explain it, but it had to happen. I even switched the doorways from red to pink just to keep up with the flaw I made earlier. Hindsight's 2020, okay? After that, I got back to work at the top of the tower and finished the part I'm gonna refer to as the ring, cause uh, yeah, that makes sense. Anyway, capitalism, enjoy. Day 36, I worked on the tower's exterior, adding some small designs so it doesn't look like a total boo. What, what is that word, boo hockey? That's a, I wrote that in the script for some reason. And I finished out the day by mining cobblestone so slowly that I refuse to use it now, cause it's a, a useless building block. After that, I went back to work on the tower, clearing out way too many mobs, which should be illegal, and working on the ways to get up. Each room that I made, I have equally no idea what to do with and don't think I ever will. Totally still not playing through the 100 days right now or anything. But once I did get to the top, I worked on the roof, something everyone knows all too well, and probably only looks good sped up in replay mod. But after it was done, I decorated the inside with leaves because green and pink go so well together, and hopefully finished off the build. Looking at this, I wish I never did a super flat video. This green landscape somehow made me make this and I hate it. But what do y'all think? Let me know in the comments below, cause I'm blech. I finished off the day by doing capitalism and hatching some chickens. I threw six eggs and got four, so I was kind of proud of this and wanted to keep them in the pen, but Chloe chopped them all up into little chicken nuggies. So I killed her cat. That's fair play, all right? We're now even Steven, got me? Day 40, I went back to the tower and made some pathways from its entrance to the wall entrance. 
I used the normal path blocks, but in such a random pattern, it kind of makes sense. After that, I made some nice bushes around the base that all had a semi-spottable pattern to them, and you'll never know because you can't see inside my head, which trust me is a good thing. Day 41, I go onto the server and did a little Wordle for half the day. It's not the real Wordle, it's just an app on my phone. The word was bush, and the fact that it took me so long while having three of the letters is embarrassing. Not to mention, Chloe won't be here for a little while because she's a bit sick. So I'm gonna have to try and grind for her until she's back. After the traumatic use of my deteriorating brain on Wordle, I went and grabbed all of the animals from the village and caged them up at my place. The idea for the chest room in this video is village stalls, and to do that I need a lot of wool, so the shearing saga continues. Since that's gonna take forever, let's plan the stalls themselves. It took me a long time to get a specific design, and even after that, I had to go to the nether for some blackstone. The reason being is I don't want to use cobble, and blackstone's a little bit easier to get in this world. And with my return home, I had the design set in stone, but having such a lack of wool really halted the progress. And the worst part is I wanted to use colors, so I had to bone meal so much grass to get all the coloring I needed. Trust me, it's a real pain using a stack of bone meal for like seven flowers. And after all that, at the end of the night, I still didn't finish the first booth. Thankfully, after that, I was able to get that one done and move on to a second booth quickly. Although I did have to bone meal more than double the village to get all the material, but what the heck, this game hates me. Now I just have to spend my time taking Chloe's organized chest and scrapping them all into the new area. But I'm not going to organize it myself, I'll let her do that when she's back. I honestly feel bad for this, but if she ends up rejoining me on the series, she'll have something to do. So now that I've been on a building spree, I want to do some adventuring, so I geared up for the nether. As I entered, I somehow found a treasure bastion right away. Before hoping for the best loot, I went to the boring side. Getting myself into a brute brawl, which again, I will say it brutes are scariest mob in the game. Yes, the dragon is absolutely nothing compared to brutes. And even the warden cannot compare to this thing, and if you disagree with me, tell me something right now. If I click on a bell, how long are you distracted for? Because the warden will not stop staring at it, okay? Brutes are scarier. Anyway, at the end of it all, I was able to get some iron, gold scraps, and a chest plate from this boring side. But that's not all I did. To do the job justice, I jumped headfirst into the bastion without any fear. But I'll tell you, there was definite fear. Remember the brute rant? Well, to clear my mind, I just killed everything around me with my crossbow. I'm really starting to learn to love this thing. But at the bottom, I was surprised by two chests. One full of iron and a diamond chestplate, and the other having almost the exact same thing but with gold and netherite. However, why do I keep getting so many chestplates? I got three from this one bastion. And of course the fun ends there. Most bastions are great for a moment until you leave them off to find another one. Right around the dang corner. Yes, my luck continues as I headed to the top boring part first, and you know the drill. But this time, I'd gotten a golden apple from one chest and a silk touch diamond pickaxe in the other. Those are some pretty good loot tables for not even going to the bottom chest first. Again, I ran into the hardest side and jumped straight into the thick of things. But this time, I was way more confident and got to the bottom floor super fast. I cleared out all of the mobs and moved on to the chest. This time, I got two netherite ingots and some more ancient debra. That's quite a bit of netherite from one chest and has easily exceeded my expectations. Of course, I'm on a high, so I have to go find another bastion, with minor leg breaking along the way. I was able to find a crappier bastion. Upon seeing it, I got Major Depresso Espresso Caffeinate Lizzo and grabbed the first chest I saw and then dipped. Then I wanted to trade with some piggies and get my riches up, although I'm trading away my gold for like leather, string, and arrows, so probably not the best call I could have been making. I also got pearls, so that's cool, but again, no stronghold, so not really helpful. But all in all, a successful trip. Day 48, Chloe was back in town, so can we get some yay Chloe's back in the comments? Thank you. Anyway, after having villagers for so long, I think it's high time I get to some book deals with them. So I went through the trades, and on my second attempt, got on breaking three. I have never had this luck before. What is going on? Then I kept going with the other three villagers, and within like five more trades, got a sharpness five book for half the cost of what I normally get it for. So I scooped that up real quick, and before the day ended, I got mending. What? Those are the best trades I have ever gotten, and of course it happened to be on a world that makes the flat earthers look like they have it right. The next day, I proceeded to make more stalls for Chloe's organization, as she has somehow started to run out of room. We went from four chests to eight, and now I'm still having to make her more room. Someone do the math on that, cause uh, I, you'll know I won't. For this stall, I went with purple, as it's not too hard to make and can be easily replicated. I also went with a yellow stall next to it and had enough wool for these builds this time. And after a long day of work, I deposited my items into the sorting boat for Chloe to deal with later. To finish out day 51, I traded with villagers to get emeralds so I can make Chloe's god axe, like mine, being sharp 5, mending, and breaking fortune, efficiency, etc. Oh, those were a lot of words. 
Day 52, I went back to the stalls and finished off two more, one being gray and one being orange. I just realized that I could have done pink, but I opted for gray. I'm an idiot. And before the day ended, Chloe found a wandering trader who had spruce and green dye. I wonder what happened to his llamas. Chloe! After that, I just went on a huge tree chopping spree for the entire day, which was weird for me because normally Chloe does that. After doing so much building with Chloe, I figured we'd go ransack some villages for iron, food, and horses. We took saddles with us so we can steal the villagers' steeds when we found them. You know the drill for this, we got to our first village and took the lives of some, well, livestock. Then we grabbed flowers as well because dying things is actually a lot harder than it looks and having to bone meal the entire ground forever has been terrible, so we'll just steal from the villages. Also now that we are a bit more stacked, the blacksmiths are not heading anymore. I wish we were getting diamonds from them, but I think we've used all of our luck. By nightfall, we found Chloe a horse, and when leaving that village, we split off in different directions. I kept on moving and found another village that was totally kept in good health, trust me. Then a couple yards outside the village, I found a huge pack of horses. I tamed one who jumped super high, and then one that was kinda fast, so I think you know which one I went with. I kept up the journey village after village until we found a stronghold. Uh, what? Apparently you can find strongholds in the sky on a super flat world now. I think because the world is so low, it just generated them at random, and I found one. I really did not plan to be able to go to the end, but if this portal works, we might just have to. I went up to loot the libraries, and while climbing it, Chloe found one of her own. So I guess we now have to go and try this. When I got to the top, the portal seems to function. If I had the eyes, I think I'd go try it. But the library is what I wanted since I now can get more books for villager trades. The good chest from the first library got me two sharp three books, which is good, I guess. And the second library gave me Riptide, Prop 4, and Loyalty, as well as another prop book. And when leaving the stronghold, I made a slight miscalculation. When I jumped off, well, I'll just let you see how it played out. I had, to lo I had a water clutch anyway. I killed my horse. So yeah, I lost the horse and had to get a new one. Sad. After that, I had to head home. We are definitely going to come back for these strongholds, but I have to meet up with Chloe first, which is what I did. I found her ransacking a village of her own, then we rode on home with the loot gathered from the strongholds and villages. And once we were home, I tried to organize all of my stuff, okay? I tried. But let me tell you, it was a really big haul. There was so much food and quite a lot of good books from all of it. Day 59 was a very productive day. I watched Chloe circle in my boat. Not sure if I like this or not, as that's my boat. After that, I stole the sheep's clothing, used it to make two more stalls, one being made of blue wool and the other of green. I'm really starting to like the small community we've made here, even if the tower is not my favorite. Also, I may have circled in the boat for a little while too. Now that we have access to the end, we need to gather blaze rods. I really didn't think it would be needed since I never planned to go to the end, but I guess here we are. While at the fortress, we never wanted to return, so we slayed as many of the blazes as we could, getting over a stack of rod. No, I'm just kidding. We only got half a stack. We would still never need this much, but it's just good to have this stuff for the future. On day 61, we were trying to make a border to the base when all of a sudden the British attacked. Of course we handled them, but now we kind of want to do a raid. It's only level 1, so it won't be that hard, or rewarding, whatsoever. But fighting a rhino has always been on my bucket list. Each level was super easy, finishing them off super quick until I had to deal with Godzilla himself. But even now, he's no match for my strength, and with Hero of the Village, the trades were so much cheaper, which is cool. Back to the outlines we wanted to do. So the goal of the giant semi half circle stuff is to house animals in two of them and then farms in the other. Now the area is gigantic and I will probably lag us out with that many animals, but why not try? Nothing can go wrong. Day 64 and 65 was the hunt for a warped forest, and it seemed we went on the only way that didn't have one. Normally you can find something like this in about 10 minutes, but it took us over 40. The last two days were finding this place, so I think you understand what has to be done now. I, I cut down the trees. Okay, I thought you understood. Now that we're back home, we began work on the stalls, doing something similar to the gigantic wall we had already made. It took us a long time because I was extremely tired. I mentioned we do this super late at night, right? Well, I was basically falling asleep at my desk while doing this, but Replay Mod sums up the build pretty well, and I think it does look quite amazing. Do you guys like the colors? Day 71, we took on another raid. Again, no point but better trade deals. And did you know villagers actually just throw stuff at you when you have Hero of the Village? It's not really good stuff, but the fact that they just chuck trades at you, is that new? I have never seen a villager give away even the crappiest of loot for free. Normally, it's always a scam. Day 72, I forgot we had one more blue wall left and spent the day finishing that up. Okay, so with the builds half done, let's go do some fun stuff, like killing a dragon. Chloe and I geared up for the fight and headed off with our horses to find the stronghold. By nightfall, we had found the resting spot of my previous horse. Wait, I haven't named anything in this video. My dead horse or the one I have now? Well, I guess it's probably good because I'm just going to leave this one here. 
Upon reaching the portal, I was skeptical if it would work, but once I put the final eye in, it did summon the end on a super flat world. I swear I did not add this in, we just actually found it. I punched Chloe in to make sure it's safe, and we started the dragon fight. I can aim, I swear. Just squint your eyes like an old person, please. At the top of one of these pillars, I was able to just pop so many shots onto the crystals. I was the turret since Chloe forgot, well, everything. Her pickaxe, bow, a crossbow, sword. Literally, the only thing she had was an axe and a shovel while in here. The whole gear up phase we did before was absolutely nothing to her, apparently. And last shot. Okay, cool. Glad we're done with that. Let's move on. Now for everyone's favorite part, walking around the end for hours at a time to try and find an end city for a chance at flight, something the Wright brothers already invented in 1903. The first city we found did not have a ship attached, of course, cause why would it? But we did use the place to get shulker shells and the worst possible loot pool from a city ever. Then we spent another 40 minutes running through the end for the second city. Yes, it took us that long just to find one more city. This one, again, did not have a ship with it, so that was cool, but again, loot. With a super flat world, I never expected to be able to go to the end and find all of this stuff, so we took advantage. The first chest was two gold and at the top a few diamonds and some extra gear. Plus, his pickaxe can go to Chloe, as remember, she forgot tools for the entire trip. What a dummy. The next place, I got half diamond armor with prot and some ores. Worth it. The next city we found was finally close to the one we were just at, and it had a ship. Although, if you know anything about city structures, you know this place will have no loot other than the ship. So, while I was getting the elytra and the loot up here, lots of diamond stuff, Chloe was getting nothing at all. But with an elytra, I can now fly around the end and find her an elytra of her own. I had fireworks, so finding a new city was a piece of pie. I would say cake, but it's Thanksgiving, so pumpkin pie it is. Also, happy Thanksgiving. I mean, it's a little bit belated, but uh, I'm saying this on actual Thanksgiving because I'm voicing it over. I voiced it over on Thanksgiving. It's Saturday now. Anyway, I found a city without a ship, but two chests to loot with nothing good at all. Thanks, Billy Gates. The next one was giant with no ship again, why is my luck so bad? But it had diamonds and iron in the first section, diamonds, gold, and good armor in the second, and finally a mix of all of the above in the third. End city number... I can't count. Had a ship this time, which is good, as the one I was wearing had almost hit red after all this time. Even flying around, it took a long time to find this stuff. The place also just had some swords and oars, it was nothing. One of the final cities I found was giant, and it had a ship, so more elytras I guess. I had to fill up shulkers I made along the way just to keep all of the gear. I would explain what I got from this, but I'll point it out to you later. And the last city had another elytra, but you know the drill, with all this gear, it's time to head back and sort all of our winnings. I put down the shulkers for Chloe, and the first thing she pointed out was how unorganized it all was. But now we have so many diamonds, I've never had such a successful super flat world in all of my time. And the rest of the day, I spent making my armor a lot better, like putting protection or mending on my pieces. Oh, and the elytra are all set with mending and a breaking, so that's really good. That was probably one of the better end city trips I've ever had, even if it took a long time. To calm down the adventure, I started work on finishing up the plots of land for farms and animals. The first place I made was just for potatoes, carrots, and wheat, but while I'm looking at this farm, I kind of have a new idea for the land. I think I might have to switch this up later. The other plot of land was for pumpkins and melons, but let's be honest, in these 100 days, I'm probably not going to use them for villager trades, so I think I've got something else planned. Okay, to finish up the gear we have, we need to make it netherite. Along the journey of these 100 days, we have done bastion hunting for netherite, but it's high time we go mining for it. So Chloe and I saddled up, or, or just walked to the nether, hey Fred, and found a spot to mine down. Chloe hasn't really mined for this before and instantly started having better luck than me. If I found one vein, she found two. If I found two, she found 13. Uh, okay, well not really, but it felt like that for a long time. Until all within like 10 minutes, I got a heck ton and totaled it all the way up to 26. Two more than I need for my full set. So I was ready to dip. I think Chloe had 16 at the time, and since we still had a little bit at home, she was good to go too. After smelting it all up, we look amazing in full netherite. It's not as hard to get as you think, but it's just a step in the right direction, or protection. <laughs> eh, that's not funny, okay. Remember how I mentioned that I wanted to change up those farms? Well, since we don't have that much time left, it's time to come up with that idea. So I've used a lot of nether material in my build so far, and I wanted it to include the other dimensions. The four quadrants will be used for two different overworld builds and then two end builds. Which is exactly why I'm clearing out land in this area. The first build I'm going to be doing is an oak meadow. I started by adding in the grass in a pattern for a river and a few hills. 
making it as not super flat as possible. Then I planted some trees and worked on a custom one for the middle. Took a little while, but ended up better than I thought for my first ever custom tree. To finish off this biome, I placed bushes, had Chloe make a small farm, and added a lovely river. With the bone mealed grass, this shaped up to be a beautiful meadow. The next biome I worked on was across the way. I gathered up some pod soil from spruce trees and started work on the only other type of wood we have for a biome, spruce. This one I made a small hill in the middle to put a tiny home on top, uh, kind of resembling a spruce village. Then I went onto the landscape with the build. I used pod soil and coarse dirt on the bottom floor and then I planted some trees while Chloe finished up getting the pod soil. Yeah, we didn't have enough at the start. At the end of it all, I added horses, plants, lighting, and this one's definitely better than the first. Okay, maybe not in your opinion, but again, my favorite biomes are spruce biomes, so looking at this, a little bit better than the oak meadow. But still, both of them look really cool in this super flat world. The last two biomes are to be end biomes, so we headed back there to collect some end stone. We were in here for quite some time, however it was getting late and I was on my own for the rest of the 100 days. But if you want Chloe to return for another 100 days with me, let me know in the comments below. I finished up the end stone and moved on to get chorus fruit. Then I took down an entire end city. I needed these blocks to make a town at the base. And lastly, I had to collect obsidian, but two different kinds. One from all of these pillars, which took me forever, and one from piglin trades. Yes, I sat here for 47 blocks of gold to get crying obsidian. Fun. The first end zone section I worked on was going to be a shrine for the dragon egg. I made a circular platform and followed it up with some rough terrain. Then I added in some spikes made from obsidian and the weeping form, of course. And to top it all off, I added some of the chorus fruit to the build and I think it looks amazing. Not the best, but not too shabby for the dragon egg. Then to finish off the day, I worked on the last landscape, just rapidly placing endstone. Remember how I said I'm running out of time? Well, it's day 99 and I just finished up the terrain. The last thing in this biome is to make a small custom town. I started with a really tiny house to get the design down, but then I upscaled it into an actual end city type building, still putting my own touch on the design. After that, I was only able to make one more building before the sun was about to set on day 100. I added in some pathways, some light, put down the chorus fruit, and we were done by the end of our time on this world. This is probably the closest I've ever cut it on one of my 100 days, but looking at the build now, it was definitely worth all of the effort I put into it. If you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button down below and consider subscribing. If everyone who watched this video right now subscribed, I'd probably be at half a million subs by the end of this year. Weird how that works. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Hope you all had an amazing Thanksgiving and peace out everybody.